Durham Museum of History. And there it is. That's what started the bull. Durham's beginnings. After the Civil War, farmers and millers moved to town, opened shops and built homes. Reconstruction era politics and the end of slavery brought big changes to the South. People had chances what seemed impossibly years ago. Durham was a place where someone could settle down, roll up their sleeves and make a prosperous new life. Before the Civil War, the place we called Durham was not much more than a rowdy tavern and a wagon road. Barlett Durham was a doctor who was named after. When the railroad came to town, it became Durham Station. North Carolina Railroad. Planning routes. Between 1865 and 1885, folks from all over flocked to Durham. Just as today, people came from many different backgrounds and for many different reasons. I remember sitting up all night on the occasion during the rush season, each member of the family working as hard as he could to string these sacks. They're talking about tobacco, cigarette sacks. You had to roll your own. Eliza needed to provide for her family, but farming was a risky business and the market for crops was unsteady. The new factories in Durham offered women like Eliza something this, the family farm could not. Year-round work and a weekly paycheck, and this is what she made here. Textiles and tobacco had close ties, and there's the ties right there, the strings at the top. She worked as a tobacco sack stringer turning cod cloth and thread into small patches like this one, used for holding loose tobacco. That was at the Golden Belt Manufacturing Company, which was Julian Shakespeare Cars, was it the guy's name? It was Julian Carr. And there he is, Washington Duke. That is his farm making tobacco. I think it was chewing tobacco. Julian Shakespeare Carr, what a name, huh? Incorporated the Golden Belt Manufacturing Company to produce tobacco bags in which Blackwell's Bull Durham tobacco was, was sold. Three years before, Carr had introduced the textile industry to Durham by forming the first textile mill, Durham Cotton Manufacturing Company. Trinity College, 1892. 
just down the street. Was moved here from Randolph County to Durham. Land donated by Julian Carr. The school's arrival signified the town's growing importance. Trinity College morphed into Duke University. Seven men called together by John Merrick in an office of Dr. A.M. Moore to found the North Carolina Mutual Insurance Life and Providence Association. Nineteen oh one, Lincoln Hospital opened in the historic Haiti neighborhood. The hospital provided health care, health education, and medical training for Durham's African American population. Closed in nineteen seventy six. Well, there's uh, Mr. Roosevelt on the back. Is he? You showing a train car? What's the deal here? 1905, gave a speech outside of Trinity College gates. James E. Shepard, founded North Carolina Central. It was the first publicly funded liberal arts college for African Americans in the nation. 1912, there it is. There's the bully, woolly bully. 1912, Durham Bulls formed as part of the North Carolina State League. Attempts to form a professional baseball team dated back to 1902, but this was the most successful. The league ended due to World War I but the Bulls reformed in 1919. The worst fire in Durham's history destroyed most of the block of Main Street between Mangum and Gorkum Street. Broken water main crippled firefighters' efforts to contain the fire. Now, yeah, it's pretty rough looking there. 1921. Durham's Jewish congregation dedicated a newly built cathedral style synagogue on Holloway Street. It took the name Beth El, Orthodox Beth El, evolved to a conservative congregation in 1961, Reform Congregation. Nineteen twenty three. Durham Public Library started the first bookmobile of service in North Carolina. In the early years of operation, the bookmobile may have been the only way for the county's rural population to access books. Well, wow, look at that bookmobile, that's pretty cool. I think Durham had the first public library in North Carolina too. 1924, over three million new buildings were constructed in the 1924 alone. December, the December announcement of the Duke Endowment to expand Trinity College as Duke University and build a medical school. Wow, look at that. It's starting to look like a city. Nineteen and twenty seven Hotel Biltmore, the Regal Theater, an African American owned live entertainment venue and movie theater, was added to the self sufficient and thriving Haytack community. George Logan built and operated the theater on East Pedigree Street, the prime business street of Haytack. Building was demolished in the seventies. Duke Hospital, 
opens its doors five years later, 1930. Well, it's changed just a little bit. Fewer than five years later, the American Medical Association named Duke School of Medicine among the top 20 medical schools in the country. Still is. 1934, Durham textile workers joined a nationwide strike at the time, the largest in the U.S. history. The strike started on Labor Day and lasted three weeks. Workers from the Irwin Mills, Golden Belt, and among others, protested low wages and poor working conditions. We'll see, this is 1934, 1935. African-American community leaders formed the Durham Committee of Negro Affairs, today the Durham Committee of Affairs of Black People. Nineteen forty one. Blind Boy Fuller. Piedmont Blues musician Blind Boy Fuller died of a kidney ailment at age thirty four. Fuller lived in Hayti and played around in and around tobacco warehouses. He was a dominant figure in the heyday of Bull City Blues scene from the nineteen twenties to the nineteen forties. Camp Butner just north of here, in Durham County, Person County, and Granville County. World War II Army Infantry Training Camp was built in. The camp brought about 35,000 GIs and civilian employees to the area and forced over 400 rural families to relocate. Wow, I didn't know that. Look at, these, look at all these soldiers marching down Main Street here. 1944, Private Booker T. Spicely was shot to death by bus driver Herman Lee Council. Council was tried for murder, but the jury found him not guilty. Spicely's death in Council trial constituted a case of racial violence and injustice. 1949, Ebony Magazine publisher Alex M. Rivera, Jr., an article about Durham's African American community titled The Wall Street of Negro America. The article probably inspired the term Black Wall Street, a nickname used to describe the Afro American financial and business community district on Paris Street. 1955, Raleigh Durham Airport. Huh, you wouldn't recognize it today. Opened its first passenger terminal. The new one story terminal replaced the combination of barracks and army service buildings that had been used as a terminal. The original terminal was demolished in 2016 due to expense and lack of practical value. 1956, Paul I. Murray, civil and women's rights activist, lawyer, poet, and priest, published a compelling memoir, Proud Shoes, the story of an American family, in which she relates her grandparents' struggles in the Jim Crow era Durham. Born in Baltimore, Maryland, Murray was raised by her aunt Pauline Fitzgerald and maternal grandparents in Durham. 1957, seven protesters participated in a sit-in at the Royal Ice Cream Parlor to challenge public segregation. The protests predated the Greensboro sit-in by nearly three years. In this photo, protesters are praying before going to court. 1958, the Research Triangle Foundation and Research Triangle Institute were founded with the goal of developing of Research Triangle Park. Today, RTP is home of more than one, over 170 companies on 7,000 acres, two-thirds of them in Durham County.
Where's uh, Luther Hodges at? 1958, Durham Redevelopment Commission created and to oversee the attempt to urban renewal. In the 1960s and 70s, historic buildings and neighborhoods were destroyed and residents displaced to renew infrastructure and improve transit around downtown Durham. 1960. February 8th, about 20 people participated in sit ins at Woolsworth, SH Crest, Walgreens, lunch counters. In this protest, students employed nonviolent direct action to protest segregated public facilities in downtown Durham. 1963. 30 days of mass demonstration led to hundreds of arrests and brought about the integration of many hotels, restaurants, and public facilities in Durham. 1968, following the assassination of Martin Luther King, Duke University students organized a week-long protest known as the Silent Vigil. Students mourned the civil rights leader, called for racial equality and freedom, and supported Duke non-academic employees in their demands for higher minimum wage, and collective bargaining rights. 1971, school desegregation. 1976, in over three days in July, 100,000 people attended Durham Folklife Festival, the biggest bicentennial event in North Carolina, predecessor of the annual Festival of the Eno. 1980. North Carolina School of Science and Mathematics opened in the grounds of the former Watts Hospital. The nation's first state-funded residential high school focusing on science, mathematics, and technology. Here it is, a tobacco auction. Look at those guys with the fedoras and suits and ties. These are tobacco uh, buyers. Last tobacco auction was held in Durham. Wow, 1987. Even though Durham's tobacco market was small compared to Wilson and Goldsboro, the auction season, August through October, was the driving force of the downtown economy. That's when you bought plenty of moonshine. The romantic comedy sports movie, Bull Durham, starring Kevin Costner and Susan Sarandon, premiered, depicting and popularized the Durham Bulls, and it was filmed in that house. What's this? 2001? 2000. The last cigarette was produced in Durham at Ligon Myers Tobacco Company closed its cigarette factory in Durham and moved its manufacturing operations to Mebbin, 30 miles from Durham. American Tobacco had moved its operations from Durham to Reedsville in 1987. Look beyond the windows. I shall, and look, I see condos where there used to be a tobacco factory. Well, it's still there. The building is still there. Liggett and Myers. And boy, they used to crank those cigarettes out. Not long ago, these buildings were empty. Though the smell of tobacco lingered in the air, I bet you could smell it today. The dampness brings out the smell of tobacco. It was, uh, they had storage warehouses here too. The Duke's Building Empire. There it is, old Buck Duke. He industrialized cigarette manufacturing and made buku bucks. Look at this, there's a, here's the bag here. Duke's mixture, and there's the Bull Durham. And Chesterfield.